Right then, we're at Inverell. Not that a servo on top of the hill sort of thing on the way out towards Warrielder. We'll go down that road there, back out, pass through Graman that way to Wollangra, have a look, then over to Ashford. Hopefully the uh, weather will stay dry. It's, um, all these gloves and that are soaked, we might as well put them back on and they might dry a bit in the wind then. And uh, anyway, as you can see, it stopped raining, and it still looks a bit threatening. At times, I end up taking on my wet weather gear off because it was just ridiculous. Those pants are not working anymore, so we were wet. And we filled up with fuel here. We might even fill up again at Ashford, we'll see how it goes. Probably have to fix that, I suppose. It'd be nice if it stays dry, It'll dry everything out. me too much one thing about I mean it's been very wet and I've still got a wet ass and wet legs and everything else but it's not cold just got my t-shirt on underneath this jacket now that's what happens when you go out west of Gyra and you you, know, you go down at probably I don't know probably possibly a thousand meters girl going along she's probably glad it's not raining too it just rained really insistently all the way from home basically to about I don't know 20 k's out of Inverell
I was watching a video on YouTube recently by the by the um, Lemon Drizzle Gang. There's such a bunch of blokes from the north of England somewhere. Might be Sheffield. Can't, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, and they they do all the reviews and test rides of old bikes. You know, everything from uh, 220 Bonnevilles, 240 Bonnevilles, old Guzzies. All, that, all kinds of bikes. Anyway, they did this um, did this ride and review of an old MZ, an MZ 250. Um, I can't remember. Oh, and it's the Super Super Five. And uh, and they did a bit of a history of the mark as well, and that kind of stuff. The way they do things, so they're pretty good. You know, they're pretty thorough, and they do their research and you know without being dry as a bunch of historians on a on a picnic you know they're, they're um, they do it pretty well they know how to get the length of the video is pretty much right all that kind of stuff and anyway, it reminded me that I that I well it didn't remind me I mean clearly I knew but I uh, I had a um, I had an MZ myself for a brief time and that was in the spring and summer of 1990 when I was in Leipzig the first time you know I, I've described previously about how I was on the train to Berlin and met this girl and you know the wall was coming down etc etc and ended up in Leipzig where she lived you know she wasn't from Leipzig she was from Magdeburg anyway Um, <laughs> talk about getting carried away with the, with the corner here. Um, so I went to Leipzig and things, you know, developed between this girl and myself. I'll, I'll call her Astrid. That's not her real name real names, you know, admitted to protect the guilty. <laughs> anyway. You know, things, things develop between, between us and I was staying, you know, on her, um, her living room floor, you know, in this little flat in, in, uh, the Lillianstrasse in Reutnitz, which is like an inner, inner east suburb of Leipzig. It's only, you know, two tram stops from the city centre from Augustus Platz, you know. Although in those days, of course, Augustus Platz was still called uh, Karl Marx Platz. And, uh, you know, so, I was, you know, oh, I was travelling in the world and having the time of my life and I met this girl and she was a hottie, you know no other way to describe it, you know, blonde haired, blue eyed, slender German Aryan love goddess, you know, <laughs> and, and she was, and uh, so I was having a, having a great time, you know, and, and it was incredibly different to be in the former, or well, still was the East then, um, you know, the wall, it was just in the process of coming down, it was still too uh, separate States, you know, the, the Deutsche Demokratische Republik and then the Bundesrepublik. And there were two separate currencies and all that. And I used to, I used to uh, get my Australian dollars and exchange my Australian dollars into Deutschmark, the West, West German currency, and get about, say so for a hundred bucks, I get about 130 Deutschmarks, but then from Deutschmark to Ostmark, I'd get um, seven or eight to one on the black market, you know, at the Hauptbahnhof or wherever, or Zoo Station if I was in Berlin. Let's slow down, I suppose. And uh, so I was having a great time, you know, 100 bucks with 
end up being, you know, close to uh, a you know, 900 bucks, 900 Osmar. And the prices, like, well, just to give an example, the, um, Nine hundred Osmar Ustlid used to pay thirty-five Osmar a month rent. So you know, it was just ridiculous. I, I was suddenly had all this money, you know, it was a <laughs> it was so so such a good exchange rate. It didn't last very long, you know, I mean you know, they, they had the currency union and whatnot, but it, well, it lasted. So, like, oh, well, you know, I'm having a great time. Even after the currency union and, and when East Germany adopted uh, Denmark, the rent was still only 85 marks a month. So it was just so easy to live there at that point. I mean, there's nothing like that now, but in those days, that's what it was like, you know. And uh, anyway, upshot of all this is I was Astrid couldn't cook to save a life you know and there wasn't much you could buy to just sort of cook with so we used to eat out quite a bit and we went to the to the Neues Harthaus in Leipzig for dinner one night which is like the new town hall it was built in 1800 and something the old town hall was built in the 14th century and it's still there you know and uh, anyway, so as is customary in in, in uh, Europe and East Germany as well, as you quite often you didn't have a table to yourself. You shared a table with other people, you know. And there were these about four or five other blokes at this table, and uh, like a couple of them were West Germans. They were from Cologne, and they were over in the East, you know, basically trying to make money, you know, and. Uh, and there's a couple of these German blokes, young blokes, you know. And we got talking a little bit, and Edda was doing, uh, oops, um, Astrid was doing a bit of translating. And, uh, and we'd start talking about motorbikes. And I said, oh, I wouldn't mind getting a bike, you know. Do a little bit of travelling around on it. And this guy said, well, I've got one for sale. I've got an MZ250 for sale. Well, it was actually an ETZ 251, so it was pretty new. It was about an 84 model, I think. And, and uh, I said, oh yeah. And we talked about it, and I said, look, if you bring it round, and have a look at it, and if it's any good, I'll, I'll buy it of you. Give you the cash, you know. Because he wanted uh, 700 Osmarks for it. So it was less than 100 bucks, you know. So we came round the next day to the flat in the Lillianstrasse and, and uh, I had a look at the bike and it was as good as he said it was, you know. He looked after it really well. It was a really nice thing. Had a little bikini fairing on it. I thought, well, you know, this will um, this will do for a little bit of riding around on. And so I bought it off him. And uh, yeah, you know, deal, done deal. A couple of nice young blokes they were. And I got the, you know, I put the bike in in Astrid's name. So she could have it, you know, when I when I left. So, I thought, all right, and so we, so I got this thing, you know, rode it around a bit, and had a bit, a little bit of a look around around Leipzig and, and the countryside around there, called it and and. Uh, uh, you know, just all kinds of places, little villages, whatnot, trying to have a look at the, you know, the countryside more than the city, you know, I was already in the city in Leipzig, so, and then one day I decided, oh well, 
why don't we go, you know, go for a bit of a, a longer trip. And so, we packed our bags, you know, and, and uh, the guy had sold us a couple of helmets as well. I think he gave them to us, actually. No, just, you know, cheap old helmets in the day. So we decided we'd go down through Dresden to Prague and down to Budapest, you know, for a bit of a look around. Through the Tatra Mountains, that sort of thing. And so we did, you know, got this little old MZ and, and you know, I tell you what, I mean, it was a, it was a newer model, as I said, like it had, um, had disc brake on the front. They still had that peculiar uh, Kickstarter on the left. There's a putty. Um, which was a strange, strange way to start a bike, but this doesn't matter what you used to. And you get used to it pretty quickly. It's really nice that the weather is now cleared up and my jeans are drying out and all that. So, you know, got our gear together, a little bag on the back, had a rack as well, that's right. Astra got on the back, you know put on a sort of faux leather jacket. I, I had bought a jacket in London, a leather jacket, like a sort of distressed looking, you know, trendy looking thing that had a zip up front and a hood. So I put that on, you know, off we went. And uh, we didn't have much luggage, we just sort of took a few things, you know, spare jeans, I might have been packed really light, had my camera stuff with me, and, and off we went. And. Stopped, went off down the the autobahn, the, uh, I don't remember which one it was now, probably the R9. And didn't get very far where we realised we had to get petrol. Anyway, well, first of all, yeah, okay, we had to get petrol. And so we turned off and went to Glimmer, which is a sort of a village. Well, they'd say it's a village, I think it's a town, you know, by Australian size. And, uh, so we stopped at, at Glimmer, which was a classic sort of East German joint, and it had the ubiquitous kind of little park with a couple of Russian T-34 tanks as a, you know, as a memorial to the uh, Great Patriotic, Patriotic War, or whatever you want to call it. Now, no, the Germans got flogged anyway, as we all know. And uh, there were a lot of, there were 480,000 Soviet troops in East Germany at that point still. And they were everywhere, you know, all through Leipzig and stuff. And out in the, out in the countryside, they were, um, they, you know, they'd taken over German army bases, I suppose, from the Wehrmacht, you know. So. So this, this became my first lesson in travelling in East Germany, which was, it's just not, it wasn't that simple. Just go, oh well, stop and get some petrol. Because so I stop and get some petrol and queue up for an hour to get the petrol. Because there are only so many petrol stations, probably, probably the same amount of fuel stations that there had been in 1939. You know, so... And the petrol station, well, they had like a state company, it was Mineral or somebody, and didn't have any of the other, the, you know, BP, Shell, Elf, I can't think of the other ones, you know, but um, didn't have any of that. So, they basically just queue up and wait for everybody to be finished and everyone would have a chat, you know, and they'd say, what the fuck are you doing here, you know? on a motorcycle from Australia or whatever it was and, and <laughs> I get in trouble with Astrid, they say, 
sag mal, was machen Sie denn hier so, so weit von zu Hause und so in der Zeit? Ah oh, ja, um weit in Perpetual. <lacht> that used to piss her off. Because <lacht> she was a bit sensitive about things East German and East and West, you know. And, and she had a reason and right to be. Because it was never a reunification, it was a takeover. Anyway, it's another story. So that's yeah, all right, off we went. Finally got some fuel and made it to Dresden. Dresden. And, uh, you know, I went through the rigmarole of getting fuel again. By this time, it's sort of, the day's getting on. So we thought, oh, we'll stay the night in Dresden. And, uh, and you know, we stopped, oh, we stopped at some kiosk and Imbis thing. I got myself a drink because it was summer and I was pretty, it was pretty warm. Got a bottle of beer and uh, probably Downers Queen or something. And uh, sitting on this park bench, you know, near the kiosk and having this beer and this Austria started talking to this old woman and turned out the old woman had a room to rent for the night if we wanted to uh, to uh, stay over, you know. And I'm going, oh, well, fuck that, you know. <laughs> I don't want to stay with these East German family, you know, in, in this sort of, you know, sit, have to sit there and watch one channel of TV with them or whatever. I said, ah, we'll get something closer into the city centre, you know. And at that time, I I mean, the whole, it was bedlam, you know, there were people coming from everywhere to, to East Germany. They were either coming from the West, you know, the rich uh, Vesey cousins, you know, or they were like um, Bulgarians, Romanians, Hungarians, Poles, Russians, all trying to get to the West, sneak out through the East German border. Because the borders had, you know, been open. And, uh... So anyway, that was alright. So now, nah, now nah, we'll go somewhere and she's going, Oh, are you sure? That's well, well. We'll be right. So off we went. Jumped back on the bike, went into the town. And we went into... Uh, uh, it, was, it was called Leninplatz then. I don't know what it's called now. But clearly it had another name, you know. Before the... the GDR Socialists got hold of everything and changed their name. So we, um, you know, I parked the bike on this, this square and, and I said, I said, well, you gonna have a bit of a look and I'll might, you know, see if we can find us a room for the night. Because everything was so cheap. You know, she, she didn't like the idea of staying in posh hotels, not that they were that posh, but, but posh, you know, in the day, and but for me it was really cheap, which kind of annoyed her a bit, you know, because, <laughs> you know, she was struggling on the money that they gave her, look, she only, she didn't earn very much money, but didn't need very much money inside East Germany. And so off she went and I, you know, I stood there looking after the bike and stuff. Fat West Germans were going past all the time and giving me looks, you know, because I looked like an Aussie by that stage. An East German, you know, because there I am with my old t-shirt jeans and with this little MZ motorbike. I should point out at this stage that the that the MZ ETZ 251 was a remarkably good bike. You know, it, like we were two up with a bag and uh, sitting on 100, 110, a little bit faster at times on the on the autobahn. You know, and and the thing just went along fine. You know, I mean, it was a two-stroke, and I'm not a great fan of two-strokes that are ring ding ding and they have a real overrun ring ding ding on the overrun you know ring ding 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 as you you know back off the throttle and stuff but the thing handled well it braked well it went 
surprisingly well and it held a good touring speed and the bike that I'd been riding before I uh, the bike I had at home at that stage was an 850 Norton Interstate and it compared reasonably well I mean you know okay it wasn't an 850 four stroke touring bike you know but it went along common I was surprised I thought oh well we'll, we'll struggle with this and have to keep all the back roads but we didn't went along pretty well you know it's a nice little spot here look at you birds naughty old currawongs now it's a good bike this bike with this bikini ferry <laughs> and it's carry rack never had any issues with it at all not that I had it long, too long anyway, as you'll find out. So, and then um, Astrid was gone for quite a while. I thought that was a bit strange. So, I was parked near this this hotel, Hotel Neva or something. No, it wasn't it. It was something else, but. Um, I thought, well, I'll just nip in and see if they got a room, you know. So I went in, went in, went into this thing, and it was a fairly upmarket place, you know. Probably like the the equivalent of the the Mercour in Leipzig, you know. It was the first time I ever saw a hotel Mercour, and it was in Leipzig, and they seemed to have popped up all over the world. Anyway, that's 30 years ago, and uh, so I went inside and I said, I couldn't talk, especially in English, I just her. Which him on, yeah, man, knew about English. And she said, oh, wait a minute, she got, got someone who spoke English. And I said, just looking for a room, just for one night. Travelling, you know, south to Prague, etc. She said, oh, well, we, um, we're full. But um, I'll have a ring around, ring around for you. And so she found me a, a room out of, at a place called the Hotel Neva, that's right, which was just across the other side of the square. It was a fairly big square, it's probably yeah, 100 metres away or something. And uh, so great, you know, I said book it for us, and she did. But I had to wait for us to come back, so she came back. And she said, oh, scheiß weiß ich, wenn man so in Aussie ist, da, da gibt's kein freies Zimmer. And, and, you know, there's no, if you're in East Germany, there are no rooms, you know, haven't found anywhere. And I said, well, actually, I found, I found us a room over there, the Hotel Neva. And she said, oh, oh yeah, I've, 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 was, I've been there and they were full. Oh, so they might be full because I took the last room. She said, oh no, so that was the first one I went to. So it was full for East Germans and they had rooms for West Germans, you know. Because um, they had more money, or Westerners, you know. Which is really disappointing and we saw that stuff all the time. So we said, oh look, you know, it was, it was getting dark and, and it was um, like, you know, summer, so it was like nine o'clock in the evening and just getting dark and, and uh, I said well let's just take the room let's not get too proud about it you know so we did and we decided we'd you know you know steal their towels and soap and eat all their food for breakfast and shove bread rolls in our pockets for the next day's trip and all that which we did <laughs> and, uh, and then off we went heading further south across the border and I'll tell you the rest of that story. You know, when I next time I get on back on the bike, you know, either tomorrow or something like that, I'm riding along. Instead of turning right here, we're going to sneak up and have a look at 
Wallangra and then we'll come back. I mean, I've probably been through here before, I just can't remember. Cute little shed, come shop or whatever. A bit of an old place. I suppose that's probably it. There's another little old farmstead, homestead. And we don't need to go up to Yetman. We've definitely been there before. There you go, mate. Well, everything feels dry now, except my ass. <laughs> A bloody thing. Wallangra That would have been a, you know, a little bit of a posh house in its day Mildly posh anyway <laughs> 